because that's what it really comes down to. People buy off of emotions and if you can convey a certain emotion and the person scrolling stops and resonates with that and they believe that your product is going to help them get that emotion and share that emotion and express that, then you have a higher chance of converting the sale. What's going on everyone? Jacob here back with another video and today we're continuing our shine on free masterclass. We're going to be talking about paid TikTok ads, how you can set those up, examples of shine on products that are selling really well with paid TikTok ads. We're going to be talking about the pros and cons because as you already know, there are ways to get sales organically with, with low investment or no investment. And then there are ways to get sales with paid ads. Right away, I'm going to jump into the cons. It does require an investment. You know, we were we were just covering how to upload products to Etsy to get sales on an organic platform because, you know, not everyone has a lot of cash to start out with. Whenever I first started, I was still in college and I didn't have very much money at all. And so, you know, I got started with organic methods. And then once I had a little bit of money to transition over to paid Facebook ads, and that's where things really took off for me and things really started scaling. And that's a side tangent, that's another story. But essentially, whenever you get into paid advertising, you need to understand that you may end up losing a few hundred dollars, especially if you have never done anything with paid advertising before. And before you click off and think, you know, oh shit, like I should probably just stick with organic stuff. I probably shouldn't do any of this. Notice that I put way more stuff on the pro side because if you're if you're serious about this business and you start getting some organic sales off of Etsy and you you have that dedication if you decide you do want to pursue e-commerce and print on demand full time you're going to need to invest in paid advertising now maybe that's only $20 a day maybe that's a very very small minimal way to get started but eventually you're going to want to take advantage of these channels that essentially as you'll find out in future slides we're we're paying for people's attention the second con that I wrote down is high ad fatigue. With TikTok, what you'll see is the algorithm at the moment prefers a lot of fresh content. Even with ads that perform very well and get lots of sales or, or get lots of engagement, you're still going to see them die after a few days of advertising. So you're going to need to create different versions, different, completely different angles with your creatives. And there is a much higher ad fatigue on TikTok ads compared to something like Facebook ads. The reason we're not starting with Facebook ads is because they are not very beginner friendly and they aren't very nice to new advertisers anymore. They used to be, but these days, if you try and create a new page and try and link up new websites and start making new ads, Facebook starts getting really frustrated with you and will probably just ban you for no reason. Not always the case. Sometimes they're nice to people, but I've just seen way too many cases of people starting new Facebook ad accounts and getting the ban hammer immediately from Mark Zuckerberg for no reason. So that's why I recommend starting with TikTok ads right now. The next slide will talk specifically about why TikTok ads are advantageous at the moment and why you want to be focused on TikTok and not Facebook or anywhere else. Um, of course, throughout this course, we will be going over the different channels for advertising for Google, for Facebook, even backend email marketing. We can go over topics like that. Bing ads, Pinterest ads, Etsy ads. There are a lot of different avenues that we should be exploring and we should be taking advantage of. But for this video, we're focused on TikTok. Once you know what you're doing, it's much more efficient to pay for paid advertising and get that speed and get the scalability than it is to just list more items on eBay or Amazon or Etsy. It just becomes so much, it becomes exponentially easier to increase your revenue whenever you're dealing with paid advertising. You can just reach so many more people. Another huge advantage is by paying for TikTok ads. If you have a TikTok account, which I recommend creating, and you get to essentially build social proof and build your brand on that social page over time. So ideally you're profitable when you're running your ads, but a side benefit of that is you're building your social account and giving it credibility. And even, even it sounds silly, but by having a video with 10,000 views or with 50,000 views and you pin it at the very top of your, your page, that might be hard to do organically on TikTok. 
but if you pay for that reach and then you keep it on your page, it stays there forever. That level of social proof and that level of credibility is now cemented onto your TikTok page and anyone in the future that comes to view your page to see if you're legit or not, they're gonna see your videos that you may have had to spend money on, but at least it's an asset. Your page is an asset too, but those posts specifically are increasing the perceived value of your brand. TikTok right now is affordable. That is one of the pros that I put down. You can reach a lot of people and you don't have to spend a lot of money. A new skill, this is huge guys. When you're learning media buying, when you're learning copywriting, when you're learning how to create ad creatives that convert, that capture attention, when you're learning how to piece everything together and structure everything, you are learning a new skill and that is transferable over to Google ads, Facebook ads, it's transferable to other areas of marketing that at first glance you might not realize is transferable, but whenever you go over to another platform, you're going to be more familiar with how it works because you've already taken the time to learn TikTok ads and learn the metrics behind the ads and the philosophy behind it. And finally, we get comprehensive data by advertising on TikTok. We're gonna talk about that more later on. Back in the day when I got started, Facebook was the king, indisputed, TikTok wasn't even really around, Facebook and Instagram ads, bread and butter, and they're still fantastic, still use them every single day to this day. So why would I be advocating for advertising on TikTok and not anywhere else? Well, TikTok's experiencing massive growth at the moment compared to a lot of other platforms that have plateaued or are declining or have a more mature user base. TikTok is still growing. It's still in a very early stage and now is the time to jump on the advertising platform because users are engaged there aren't as many advertisers yet. I mean, basically, the more users they have, the more inventory they have. They can show their advertisements to more people, so it's cheaper for us as advertisers to get in front of them. It's also actively welcoming new advertisers and businesses to buy ads on their platforms. In some cases, even giving discounts, um, you know, $100 coupons, $300 coupons to try out the platform. Whereas Facebook, is being semi-hostile to all of their advertisers, especially new advertisers. So that's a huge reason why I'm recommending TikTok. You know, headache, Facebook's gonna be a big headache. TikTok is going to be a little bit nicer to you. They're going to actually be excited that you're joining their platform and it's gonna be easier to get started this way. And in my personal opinion, TikTok ads are also easier to learn. You can easily select your targeting, it has a very similar structure to any other advertising platform. If you have other experience with other platforms, it will look familiar. Again, this is a transferable skill. So once you learn how to use TikTok ads and their platform, it will transfer over. Quickly, let's go over the components of a good shine on TikTok ad. So we're not gonna be talking about slideshow ads. We're gonna be talking about user-generated content. The most effective ads on TikTok are going to look native to the platform and they're generally going to be user-generated content. So something shot with a phone that feels very real, relaxed, it doesn't feel forced. So the structure is essentially this. The first one to three seconds, you're going to hook in the person that you're targeting. So if you are selling a necklace that is from dad to daughter, then you're going to be targeting dads and you're going to try and hook those dads in within the first three seconds with a question or exclamation that kind of subconsciously gets them to stop. You know, the thing is with TikTok is we can get scrolling really quickly and if something doesn't hook you in almost immediately and make you almost do a double take, then you have a good chance of missing your prospect they're gonna keep scrolling by. So the first one to three seconds, hook them in. Then you have different style options from there. No matter what happens, you're gonna transition from the hook into the actual message card jewelry itself. You're going to read the message but you have different style options too. For example, hey, I got this gift from my daughter. What do you guys think? Um, or it could just be an opening box review. You could be like, I, I received this in the mail. It's for my granddaughter. I'm gonna unbox it. I'm gonna review it. That's a style option. Plain and simple, that's okay. If you wanna just open the box, ask a question, read the message, and then close the box and say order today, free shipping, that works fine too. That's more of a commercial style ad. For user-generated content reviews, you could either send the product to an influencer or have one of your friends and family, or it could be yourself as well. Review the product, open it up, say why they loved it, say how they felt as they were receiving it. 
because that's what it really comes down to. People buy off of emotions and if you can convey a certain emotion and the person scrolling stops and resonates with that and they believe that your product is going to help them get that emotion and share that emotion and express that, then you have a higher chance of converting the sale. And finally, number five is to follow a trend or a trending sound. On TikTok, it is still very much a platform based off of trends. Not only will the algorithm pick up on certain trending sounds and video effects, but the community on TikTok will actually create different trends based off of sounds and um, based off of different things happening in the community. So just by scrolling TikTok, you'll notice different trends. You'll see sounds used repetitively over and over again. You can think of a way to incorporate that into an advertisement with your Shine On message card jewelry, and it's going to be extremely native to the platform and has a good chance of working well. And again, the body of the advertisement is going to be the phrase itself. Talk a lot about the emotion that the recipient will feel or has felt receiving the gift, but the message card itself should be with, with either hiring someone to read it or reading it yourself in a way that conveys the emotion of the card. And finally, you don't want to get to the very end of the video and then not tell them what to do next. We want a call to action and an offer. A lot of the times I'll say it's still on sale, get it at 20% off now and free shipping something like that and there will actually be a button that pops up at the bottom of your ad with a shop now and TikTok will direct them to your landing page to your website the music that you end up choosing for your ad will be critical for your success typically something sad or instrumental or um, emotional is going to resonate with the message that you have but if you did write a message that isn't as um, sad and it's more upbeat then you might go with something more romantic. You want your music to fit the emotion that you want the person scrolling to feel. So if your card is kind of sad in nature, um, you know, then you might want to have a slower, sadder instrumental. If your card is is passionate and upbeat and loving, then you might want to have something more, um, you know, upbeat and passionate. You know, your music needs to kind of match the emotion that you want them to feel. So let's go ahead and watch these advertisements. I encourage you to study them, watch them multiple times so that you can analyze what is successful in these ads and apply them to your own ads. So we're gonna watch these videos together and then we're gonna come back and talk about them some more. Hey all, so my daughter is really, really hard to buy for, and I think I did good this year. So uh, i really love to hear what you have to think about it. Uh, I love the box, and then when it opens up, it's got a light on it already, so I think that's really, really cool. The necklace is beautiful, and I didn't have to come up with the phrase, but I love the phrase. So, to my daughter, never forget that I love you. If I had to choose between loving you and breathing, I would use my last breath to say I love you. Just remember that no matter how near or far apart I am, I am always right there in your heart. You'll always be my baby girl. Love, Dad. So what do y'all think? You think I did good this year? She's super hard to buy for. I found this and I think it's just, I was super impressed with the quality of it. Looks gorgeous. I love the saying. Uh, love to hear what you guys have to think. Thanks. Okay, so we're back. We've watched the advertisements. Hopefully you've taken a few notes so that you can implement them and take action for your own brand and your own store. If this was useful, we can go over another video and just spend the entire time talking about examples of ads that are killing it and designs that are killing it. And then maybe also go into some videos that aren't doing so well. So now that you know the basic fundamentals of a Shine On TikTok ad, and you've seen some examples of some winning ads, I encourage you to, at this stage, create two ads. I say two because I don't think one is ever quite enough whenever you're testing out a product. You need at least two, ideally three or four. You'll need the product created in Shine On, and you'll need the product page ready on Shopify. So if you don't have a Shine On account, you don't have Shopify set up, you're gonna need to go back to the last video Sign up for Shine On, sign up for Shopify, it's free. There should be a 14 day free trial with Shopify, but that is plenty of time to get started and get going. If you don't have your Shine On account ready, your product ready and your store ready, then you'll need to come back. 
I like to use my phone in vertical orientation and I use cinematic mode, but if you don't have that, it's okay. But I like to use cinematic mode to blur out the background. And then I like to take my videos outside, but anywhere that is well lit will work well. For the hook, do you think my daughter will like this gift or did I do a bad job? And then I read the message for word, show it as I'm, as I'm, as I'm filming and as I'm spanning across the message and as I'm kind of, you know, shining the jewelry just a little bit, moving the box around, I will read the message. And then at the very end, there will be a call to action. I usually say it's still on sale. Get it now while you can. So create two ads. I encourage you to film them. And then if you need to add music to them, which you probably will, you can either do that as you're creating your TikTok ad inside of the ad manager, or you can do that on Canva for free. You can find some royalty free music and add that to your ads. And if you have any questions, leave a comment below. I can create a video on that. So a few things to avoid. Make sure that your message card is visible and not covered up by TikTok elements. TikTok has a lot of elements on the right hand side and on the bottom and some even on the very top that will cover up your words on your actual message card and they will, you know, completely block the ability to be able to read your card. People scrolling by, if they can't read what's on your message card, they're not going to be able to connect with the message and they're not gonna be able to buy. You're gonna be spending money to show an ad to someone that they can't even really read or see and it's not gonna be effective. You're gonna lose money, they're not gonna to wanna to buy. It's not gonna be a win-win for anyone except for TikTok. Focus on the message and the emotional reaction of the receiver. We've said that many times already, but it's extremely important. You know, the jewelry piece is beautiful. It is going to be, you know, shimmering and, and shining and it's definitely going to be noticed because it is the gift. But the bigger gift, the capital G gift, is the actual message and the feeling and the vibe and the emotions behind it. Avoid putting in any pauses in your video that's gonna make it unnecessarily long or boring. You don't want anyone to have any reason to just keep scrolling because they get bored for half a millisecond. Whatever you can to reduce space out of your videos is probably going to be beneficial for maintaining attention and for getting people to the very end of your video, which is where you have your call to action, which is where you ask people to actually go and purchase your product. So avoid pauses, cut out any dead space in your videos. Don't overcomplicate the process. A simple 30 second video of you reading the card out loud has the potential to be a huge winner. Here's a few other things to keep in mind. Not required, but guys, I highly recommend that you create a TikTok page that takes like five minutes and build your brand's page up to a thousand followers. How are you gonna do that? Well, you can make Spark ads, which we're gonna talk about in a moment, that are going to connect to your page and will help you grow your page as you spend and as you advertise your products. And then once you have a thousand followers, you can place a link to your website in your bio and you can build long-term credibility by having this page. It's not required. You don't need a TikTok page to advertise, but I recommend going for the long-term goal of building a community over time and having something that you can look back on. And even if you're not uh, sales off of your direct ads, if you're running Spark ads and they're running to your existing page, then you might get an ad, you might get a sale two weeks later. It's still getting circulated, it still exists. Whereas if you turn off an ad and you don't have a page, then it doesn't have anywhere to live and it kind of just disappears. But if you have a TikTok page, then you can do a Spark ad, that post can live on that page forever and it can still get some organic reach even if you turn the ads off. So I do recommend building a TikTok um, following. It doesn't need to be anything crazy. You don't need to post organic content every single day. You can if you want to, but the main goal is to build up a small community and to build up social credibility. Keep in mind that advertising is not a money printer. You, you know, just because you set up ads does not mean that you're going to make back three, four or five times however much you put in. You know, of course that's what everyone wants, but ads are simply there to capture your prospect's attention and then direct it towards your product or service. Ads are not there to magically somehow find customers for you. No, you still have to convert that attention into a sale. So advertising is incredibly important. Marketing is incredibly important, but you actually have to have a good landing page, a good, a good website with a good experience, and you have to have a good product that people actually want to buy for their loved ones at a good offer. Otherwise, advertising is just gonna be a way for you to make TikTok richer and <laughs> not yourself. Spark ads versus normal ads. Spark ads are retained as a native post on your TikTok page forever, whereas normal ads don't appear on your page because you don't have a page 
or even if you do have a page, if you decide to run a normal ad instead of a Spark ad, it's not gonna show up on your page. Spark ads continue to get organic reach even after you turn off paid advertisements. We already talked about that. Spark ads gain credibility on your page. They help help you establish credibility on your page. They're an easy way to get 10,000, 25,000, decent amount of views, pin it to the top of your page, and this makes your brand more trustworthy in the eyes of the TikTok community. So down here in the bottom right, this red rectangle is where you want your content and your message to show up. This is the safe zone. Notice these other elements over here to the right and the bottom, they could get in the way of your advertisement. So when you create your video, keep in mind this space right here, this square is where you want your message to end up and to be, to be visible and to be read. You know, obviously there's some space up in here too, up in the top right, but it's, it's pretty minimal. This is your main area right here. And so it has a built-in call to action direct to the website that appears at three seconds. But if someone were to click on your actual profile picture, they would be taken to your page. At the end of the day, try both. Try normal ads, try Spark ads. If you're serious about this, you're gonna have to do a lot of testing and there's going to be, you know, countless times that Spark ads work in some situations. Normal ads are going to work in other situations with other products. The algorithm might change. I mean, there's all kinds of variables. Don't take don't take some guy on the internet's word for it. Like actually test this stuff out for you. I'm just letting you know what's worked for me. Spark ads all the way. This is what has worked for me as a basic campaign structure so far with TikTok ads and Shine On. I set up one campaign as a conversion campaign. If the ad account is brand new, if there's no data on the pixel, I will start out with add to cart or maybe even view content. And the reason being is because if I start out with a conversion objective of purchase, I'm not going to get any spend on my ads and you aren't either. So that's just the way it is right now on TikTok. I highly recommend starting with add to cart or view content. And then as you start getting purchases, every campaign forward, you're going to want to do purchase. From there, inside of that one campaign nested inside, I have one ad set for $20 and we'll go over some of the targeting and everything a little bit later. But for now, so all you need to know is I have one ad set for $20 with two different Spark ads. Then what I do is I duplicate the exact copy of it. You might be wondering why you'd want to duplicate the same ad set within the same campaign. On TikTok, you'll notice very quickly that each ad set is going to perform very differently. It's a segment of people. It is a group of people that are going to see your ads and some ad sets are going to perform well and some aren't. So for a basic campaign structure, because you're going to be running these ad sets at $20 a day, and that's the minimum that TikTok requires, and that is the basic TikTok campaign structure, we're not gonna go anything more complicated right now. We will be sharing more content soon on different advertising structures and different ways that you can run ads. Before we go any further, we're going to be setting up our TikTok pixel in Shopify so that we can actually create these ads because without our TikTok pixel, we're not gonna be picking up data. We're not gonna be able to actually properly run ads. Let's jump into a quick tutorial of how to set up a TikTok pixel with Shopify. Sign in to your Shopify store and then go to the app store and search for TikTok sales channel. Once you add this app to your store, you'll be able to scroll down and click on set up now and from here you can either create your TikTok ad account and your business manager or you can sign into your existing accounts you'll also be able to select your data sharing preferences anywhere from standard up to maximum i chose maximum so that i can get the most accurate results and so my ads will be shown to the people most likely to convert make sure you have green check marks on everything click finish setup and then make sure you've got this green message so here. now we know our basic campaign structure we, we we know that TikTok ads are a great opportunity. We have our pixel set up. It's time to create a TikTok Spark ad. So the very first step here, it, whenever you go to create a new campaign, you're gonna choose conversions. And before you even choose conversions, you're probably gonna be prompted with a little window that's asking you if you want to do an advanced build or you want to do the, the um, I think it's like recommended or like suggested build or something like that. You, you wanna do the manual advanced process. It's not hard. We set it up in a few minutes. Let's go. Conversions. And then I put a name in the campaign box down here and named my campaign. I'm testing out a luxury watch for husbands. And 
this is your very first step, just choosing conversions and naming it. You don't need to touch anything else. So now we're looking at the ad group, ad set, level, and we're going to select website because we're sending traffic to our website. You're gonna to want to pick your TikTok pixel from this drop down menu. In this case, I'm going to be choosing complete payment because my, my pixel is already set up. My website already has traffic running to it and I don't need to optimize for a lower objective, but remember that it's okay to start out with add to cart or um, even just visitors view content. You can leave everything else alone for the moment. Moving on to placements, you're going to want to choose select placement and TikTok. Test it out for yourself, don't just take my word for it. Go ahead and try automatic placements too because things change all the time. Your ad account might work better with automatic placements than mine does. You gotta try it for yourself. Another thing to keep in mind, I leave automated creative optimization off. Some people turn it on. Now we're on to the targeting section. We're going to do custom targeting. We're going to do United States and we're going to select English. And since this is a gift for boyfriends and husbands and for men, we're going to target females 18 to 55 plus. For interests and behaviors, I've selected purchase intention, gifts and flowers, gifts, apparel, and accessories. Again, it's gonna have to be up to your testing to decide which interests are worth keeping, which ones are worth taking out, and some people don't like to do any interest targeting at all. So I also recommend to try testing out an, an ad set that doesn't have any interests and see how that performs compare the data at the end of the day i do targeting expansion for interests and behaviors because if i don't then my ads don't typically spend very much that's usually what happens if you include interests um, you're going to need to expand it anyway so in this case we're just giving tiktok a framework to work off of and then saying hey if you want to go further if you want to expand beyond people who are interested in gifts go for it 20 dollars is the minimum 25 dollars is what i set um, you know and then for scheduling I set it to start the next day um, right at 12 a.m. so that it gets a fresh start at the beginning of the day. And a lot of people like to do day partying. This is something that I'm probably going to make another video on pretty soon. I've just started implementing it. I day part from 7 a.m. to about 11 p.m. And that makes it to where my ads only show within that window whenever my typical typical time, whenever my audience is actually awake and willing to make a purchase, you know, 1 a.m. to 4 a.m. There's not really a lot of my customers ready to pull out their wallet and make a purchase, but I have had success with all day as well and not doing any day party. So it's not necessary, but just wanted to throw that quick tip in there. Bidding and optimization, I have my optimization goal as conversion and my bid strategy as lowest cost. Created our campaign, we created our ad set, and now we're going to create our Spark ad. So I've named this ad video one outside because I had multiple ads, one was inside, one was outside and I have the date there at the very end, and then I select use TikTok account to deliver Spark ads because we're going to use, you're gonna select your existing TikTok account, and you can either use a post that you have already posted on your page, or you can go on to create a totally new advertisement that once it goes live, it's going to be posted to your page. Take your creative, and if you need to add music to it, if you need to edit it, you can do so on this page. You'll, you'll click on create, and it'll take you to a section where you can actually create your ad inside of TikTok, as long as you have your raw footage of you actually reading the message out loud and filming the jewelry piece. So you can also go ahead and create your ad with music, with everything edited inside of Canva and then upload it directly. That's also an option. So it's whichever you prefer. Now we have a little bit of text, not very much. They only allow us hundred characters. I usually put in something like, I cried when she gave this gift to me, or she loved this gift, she hasn't taken it off. In this case, I'm trying to sell this luxury watch. I'm targeting women. The text that I'm going to have displayed at the very bottom is going to be, I cried when she gave this gift. If you think of some text, if you don't want to do something like this where you try and provoke an emotion, you can also just say something like, sale ending soon, free shipping made in the United States. Put your link down here. I have a bit.ly link, but also you could just put in your normal link. It doesn't. Put in your link here where it says URL. And then for the call to action, I choose standard shop now, but you can also choose dynamic and choose several different options that will be displayed based on the person that's being showed to. And then you'll want to check both of these boxes here. Leave the disclaimer off because there shouldn't be any reason why you should need a disclaimer and then you should be able to click create ad and be good to go data that we collect from these advertisements once they spend twenty dollars forty dollars 
It's gonna help us make critical decisions. It's gonna help us move forward. Not only is it priming our pixel and optimizing our pixel, once our ads have been running and spending money, they're going to start collecting data. This data is based off of how people that see your ad react to it. Do they click on the ad or do they keep scrolling? Do they purchase your product or do they just go to the landing page and add to cart? You're going to be able to see all of this data and from that, not only will you know how things have been performing within each ad, within each ad group and within each campaign, you will also have an idea as to what you need to do next. You know, by, by understanding your data and understanding your metrics, you are going to have a better idea of what to do next. Otherwise, you're going to be kind of sitting in no man's land, like, oh, I think I should turn this on, I think I should turn this off, I think I should do this. But with data, you can be confident. With data, you can look at your advertisements and say without any emotion, this is working, it's not working. This is making me money, this is losing me money. When you're purchasing ads, you're not just paying for attention, you're also paying for the data that's collected. Don't don't underestimate the data. I know a lot of it is tiresome to look at. I know there are a lot of other things that you need to be doing in your business and in your life, but your data is going to give you the feedback that you need to move forward and it's gonna help you understand how everything is performing. Forward, let's take about 60 seconds to set up our columns in TikTok so that we can see our data in a meaningful way that will help us make good decisions and understand the performance of our campaigns and how much profit we're making. You'll come up to this drop down and to customize our columns so that we get all of the right metrics and we're seeing all of the data that we need to see. You're going to leave everything that's already up here at the top, you know, ad group names, stuff like that, unless you want to remove it, but then make sure what's really important is you come down here and you add CPC, CPM, and you should just be able to search up here for the metric you're looking for and add it. And you can arrange this however you like, but I would recommend pausing the video and going through and adding each of these metrics because what this is going to do is once you come down here and you save your preset columns, you do daily metrics, and then click confirm, now this is gonna be saved. You're gonna be able to select this column setup every single time you come into your ad manager. And then essentially you're going to have all the data that you need available and ready to, to view and to make decisions from. So yeah, feel free to mess around with the different metrics, add stuff in if you feel like it's important and, and you want more metrics and you want more data, but at the bare minimum, go through and add these metrics because it's gonna give you the data that you need to make decisions going forward. Four key points here. I know that this is far from everything, but this video is getting rather long. So we're gonna stick with CPM, cost per thousand impressions. I aim for my CPMs to be under $10. CPC, cost per click. I aim for lower the better, obviously, because it's a huge indication of whether an ad is working or not. And cheap clicks are fantastic as long as they are still the right audience, the right people, and still have the intent of buying then cheaper clicks are great. I try to aim for under 50 cents. Click-through rate. Click-through rate, uh, I try and aim for 2% or higher, but it's gonna tell you whether or not people are actually clicking on your ad and then clicking through to your website and then interacting with your website. It gives you a good idea of whether or not you have a bunch of people kind of looking at your product and not really interacting with it, or do you have people who are actually going on to, to engage with, with what you've presented them? You know, the website that, that you put in front of them, the product that you put in front of them. Cost per acquisition. I aim for about 15 to $20 CPA or less. What is, what is CPA, what is cost per acquisition? Literally just means how much does it cost for you to get a sale? How much does it cost for you to acquire a customer? And in this case, with Shine On Jewelry, you're just getting started. Um, you know, you can set whatever limit you want for yourself, but for me personally, I feel comfortable in the $15 to $20 cost per acquisition range because if I sell a jewelry piece for about $60 or $70, then I should be walking away with a 25% to 30% profit margin, potentially even more. And that's how I like to do business. I like to have at least a decent one third chunk profit margin at the end of everything you don't want to sell your products for 40 bucks and expect to make a profit um, if your CPA is still 20 bucks, you know, because you're, the cost to fulfill your product is gonna eat away and taxes and everything else is gonna eat away at your profits. 
So you want to keep your cost per acquisition low. Now, if you're seeing a low CPA, it means that your ads are working and that you can scale. It means that you need to take inspiration from your ads that are working and make variations and, and make similar ads that are different, they, but they follow the same formula so that you can hopefully get repeatable success going forward. When you see ad groups and ads that have low cost per acquisitions, those are your winners. And the high, the ad sets with high cost per acquisition or no cost per acquisition because they've just spent money and not gotten any sales, those are the ads that aren't working, the products that aren't working, that need to be cut, that need to be removed, that you need to move on from. This data is telling you to move on. It's also telling you that what you did in your advertisements or the product that you put in front of that audience is not a match and it's not working and it's time to test. It's time to get back to the drawing board and keep testing or focus on the ads or products that are getting the lower cost per act. So this is the last slide that I had planned, consistency and curiosity. Don't expect to launch one or two advertisements and knock it right out of the park, hit a home run, and never have to launch ads again. This is going to be a skill that you're going to have to learn over time. It's going to get frustrating at some points. You may lose a little bit of money to begin with to, to basically the tuition to learn the skill and to get better. Don't expect overnight success. And if that's what you're expecting, then you're probably going to be disappointed with paid advertising. It is a gruesome, repetitive process that you have to be consistent with. And when it works, it works really, really well. And when it doesn't work, it can be frustrating. <laughs> so keep that in mind. And finally, guys, remain curious, try new advertising strategies, style of ads, test, adjust, and test again. We recommend, and what I do is focus 80% on, on the video styles and the formats that you know are gonna work. Focus 80% on the products and the ads and, and things that you know works well for you and that you want to build on and scale 80% scaling but 20% has to be left over to this curiosity side of things where you say what if I did it completely opposite of what Jacob is telling me right now what if I instead of optimizing for conversions I optimized for engagement what would happen and you know it obviously if you don't have a huge testing budget to experiment with then don't do that you know focus focus on conversion ads and focus on everything that we just went over but if you have more of a budget and you're really serious about this then 20 percent can go to testing some really you know basically some theories that nine times out of ten is not going to work but if you if, if there's a one in ten chance that your theory is going to be a home run then it is worth pursuing and you need to remain curious in that way it also keeps things interesting so that you're not just repeating the same ads over the same structure over and over and over again. That was a longer video, but I hope that you got value from it and you're ready to take some action and you're ready to make money with paid TikTok ads. And also just learn the life skill of paid advertising and marketing because it's incredibly important for anyone that wants to succeed with print on demand and online business. Guys, if you got value from this video, please like, please subscribe and leave a comment below with any questions that you have or videos that you would like to see because we have a lot more content coming your way. My goal is to provide as much value as I can and just help you um, not repeat the same mistakes that I did and help you succeed faster in your print on demand e-commerce business. So I'd love to see you join the community. We're on the way to a thousand subscribers. Would love to have you in the community. And guys, until next time, have an amazing day and create something awesome.